Meet Ram Kulkarni. He is now a postdoctoral fellow in Iser Pune and works in the Center of Excellence in Epigenetics. His PhD was on biosynthesis of flavor chemicals in mango. But now he has a new yet related problem chemo sensation. To study the phenomenon of chemo sensation and its relationship to eating, he has taken Hydra as a model. Hydra is a creature that lives in water. Biologists used to think that it's a plant just because of its shape, but it's really an animal. Ram knows that Hydra is a primitive animal with only two layers of cells enclosing a lumen. On the outer layer, there are specialized cells called nematocysts, which have triggers protruding out. When the prey comes into contact with the trigger, the stinging cells inside the nematocyst shoots out and pierces the prey. Ram knows that the injured prey releases glutathione, a chemical. The chemical diffuses through water and stimulates the primitive nervous system of the animal. The nervous system responds. The tentacles are retracted to the mouth, the mouth opens and the hydra engulfs its food. Ram also knows that just by adding glutathione, he can make hydra exhibit the feeding behavior, including the retraction of tentacles and opening of mouth. The challenge that he is facing is this. What is the reliable, easy and quantitative way to measure feeding behavior in hydra? As in any scientific research, he tried to stand on giant shoulders, reading up whatever information can be found on hydra. It is then that he came to know from a scientific paper from Fukuoka, Japan, that two scientists had tried to quantify feeding behavior in hydra based on the number of hydra exhibiting feeding behavior. But then, feeding is an individual behavior. Population-based approach is subject to variation. Opinion of the observer may creep into the observed data. Ram was not satisfied. Then he saw a paper from scientists in the US. They had tried to establish the phenomenon of mouth opening as a quantitative measure of feeding. But then it is quite tedious to observe the opening and closing of the mouth of individual polyp. And then again, there are uncontrollable parameters like the direction of the mouth during observation. Ram was not satisfied. It is then that he came across a software called GIMP. This is a freeware available for download from internet, an alternative to Photoshop, an image manipulation program at no cost. While exploring the menu of the software, he found a tool that measures the distance between two points of an image in pixels. The distance between the mouth of Hydra and the tips of its tentacles reduces while feeding, and it can be reliably and easily measured using this tool. This could solve his problem. A Eureka movement. But then he has to establish the validity of his hypothesis. He has to develop a scientific protocol to measure feeding behavior in Hydra. This is the protocol he developed. <laughs> his lab keeps Hydra at specific and regular conditions of lighting and temperature. He takes just one Hydra, a fully mature one, and transfers it to a 24 well plate. He then removes the extra medium very carefully by tilting it and then immediately adds some fresh medium. He then prepares some glutathione solution. Glutathione is prone to oxidation, so he has to prepare it afresh each time he does the experiment. He then transfers the plate with the hydra in it to an imaging platform of a microscope attached to a camera. He prefers a dark background so that the images of Hydra have adequate contrast. Fluctuating intensities of light, air currents and even addition of water will make changes in the behavior of Hydra. So it has to relax in its new environment before the first picture is taken. This is time zero of the experiment. 
he then quickly adds some glutathione and captures images every 15 seconds for about 5 minutes. During which time the Hydra adjusts to the new levels of glutathione and goes back to the state of relaxed tentacles. He does his experiment in the first half of the day, returning the Hydra back to its specified lab habitat. Hydra 2 exhibits diurnal cycles and he has to make sure that this phenomenon does not have any effect on his experiments. Once the images are captured, they are opened with GIMP, the image manipulation program. Now it is just a matter of clicking on the mouth and dragging to each of the tentacles. One by one, he can get the distances in pixels. When these are averaged, he gets a number which he can call the tentacle spread for that particular hydra at that particular time. He does the same experiment with a control where not glutathione but deionized water is used. And then plots a graph. See? The control hydra goes back to relaxed state in about a minute. But the starved hydra continues to show feeding behavior. With data from many such experiments, with starved and well-fed hydra, he demonstrates that the protocol that he has developed is a reliable and easy method of measuring feeding behavior in hydra in terms of tentacle spread. One more scientific paper to his credit. But Ram Kulkarni is not satisfied. How does the glutathione receptor in hydra cause the changes in the nervous system such that the tentacles are retracted to the mouth? What exactly is the molecular mechanism? There are many more next steps to be taken in the journey embarked by Ram Kulkarni.